Welcome to our channel. Today, the Philippines military's future robotic projects, revealed with facts, figures, and timelines you need to know. This transformation is not in parades, it's in labs, test ranges, and at sea. The AFP faces internal insurgencies and tense maritime standoffs, and it's betting on unmanned systems to tilt the balance. Silicon steel and algorithms, the new force multipliers that never sleep. This is about homegrown solutions for Philippine conditions, designed by Filipinos for Filipino soldiers. Backed by the Department of National Defense and measurable investment, this push has timelines and targets. Tonight we pull back the curtain. On the drones, UGVs, and naval robots at the center of this shift, expect hard numbers, procurement counts, cost figures, endurance specs, all analyzed. Let's begin with the all-seeing eyes in the sky. At the forefront, Project Aguila, Eagle, a push for long-endurance UAV ISR over Philippine waters. The centerpiece is the Hermes 900 from Elbit Systems. Key specs, a 15-meter wingspan and endurance up to 36 hours with operational ceilings near 30,000 feet. Delivery, a government-to-government -government deal with Israel valued at about $175 million. Procurement included nine Hermes 900 medium-altitude long-endurance UAVs and four Hermes 450 tactical drones. Payloads, EOIR cameras, SAR, synthetic aperture radar, and communications intel sensors, enabling day-night all-weather ISR. These drones expand maritime domain awareness, persistent patrols over the West Philippine Sea and EZs. The 300th Air Intelligence and Security Wing reports improved targeting accuracy and operational tempo since full operational capability late 2023. Project Aguila is the operational core of a new information-led doctrine. On the ground, Castor, combat and service support tactical operations robot. A rugged six-wheeled UGV prototype showcased at Fort Magsaysay in 2024. Modular design, swap reconnaissance sensors, a robotic manipulator for EOD, logistics modules, or medevac stretchers. Castor offers EOD standoff, removing soldiers from dangerous IED work. Funding, initial 50 million pesos, US 850000 for R&D. Current remote control range, around 5 kilometers. Tested for resupply and casualty evacuation. Key force multipliers in austere terrain. Spearheaded by the Army Research and Development Center in partnership with local tech firms. Objective? field an initial 20 units for extensive testing by 2026. Leadership, senior commanders hail Castor as life-saving technology. Buhawi, Whirlwind. The Philippines' tactical UAV developed locally by DOST and the PAF. Designed for rapid squad-level deployment, rugged and cost-effective. Reported endurance, 4 to 6 hours with an operational range up to 50 kilometers. Airframe uses locally developed lightweight composites and domestically integrated systems. Milestone. First successful prototype flight announced early 2023, a point celebrated by DOS T leadership. Everyone from the flight control computer to EOIR payloads and comms is being developed locally. DOST invested over 60 million pesos, US 1M, in initial development. The PAF plans procurement after 2025 testing. Buhawi is intended to sit at the squadron platoon level, giving tactical commanders organic aerial ISR, a cheap, deployable asset that democratizes aerial intelligence. A maritime nation of over 7,600 islands, the Philippines must patrol vast sea lanes and EEZs, the Navy is pursuing unmanned surface vehicles, persistent sentinels that extend reach and endurance. In Balakatan 2024, the Philippine and U.S. Navies tested advanced USVs off Palawan. Exercises included U.S. systems such as the T-38 Devil Ray, 
a high-speed autonomous patrol craft. These drills help the Navy build doctrine, tactics, and requirements for future acquisition. Shipborne drones, like the Shebel Camcopter S-100, can give a frigate over the horizon targeting an ISR. Shipborne drones and networked USVs expand a vessel's surveillance bubble without exposing ships to risk. Solar-powered USVs can stay on station for weeks or months, relaying live feeds to Naval HQ via satellite. As Vice Admiral Toribio Adachi Jr. put it, unmanned systems are the future of maritime law enforcement. The West Philippine Sea is the main stage, where unmanned systems will be tested strategically. A network of aerial drones, USVs, and eventual AUVs can create a transparent maritime picture. Hermes 900S provide persistent wide-area surveillance, making undetected operations far more difficult. High-res time-stamped footage raises the political cost of aggressive actions by documenting movement in real time. Evidence from UAVs has been used in diplomatic protests strengthening Manila's case regionally and with allies. Sharing AFP ISR with allies like the US, Japan, and Australia enhances the Philippines' value as a security partner. Unmanned systems are cheaper to operate. A Hermes 900 can patrol for 30 plus hours far cheaper than manned aircraft. This is about maximizing defensive impact per dollar persistent presence without breaking the budget, asymmetric deterrence, cheaper, persistent, networked. To understand Manila's moves, compare them to global leaders, the US, China, and Israel. The US fields, Global Hawks, and MQ-9 Reapers, decades of unmanned operations. China pours resources into Wing Lung and CH Series UAVs for regional power projection. Israel remains a leading drone exporter, and Manila partnered with them for Hermes acquisitions. The Philippines pursues a dual-track approach, acquire proven foreign systems and develop domestic platforms like Buhawi and Castor. This model mirrors successful middle powers such as Turkey with its Bayraktar program. Local manufacturing builds expertise, reduces long-term dependency, and may open niche export chances. This could spark a regional trend. ASEAN neighbors will likely accelerate their own unmanned programs. Manila aims to be a smart follower, leveraging imports while growing indigenous capability. The road ahead has hurdles, technical integration, human capital, budgets, and cybersecurity. Different systems from multiple vendors must interoperate a complex systems of systems problem. Building unified command and control needs investment in secure data links, encryption and middleware, human capital, pilots, sensor operators, analysts and maintenance techs. The AFP must train and retain them. Budget continuity matters, life cycle costs, spare parts, maintenance, upgrades. These can exceed the purchase price. Cybersecurity is critical, jamming, GPS spoofing or hijacking unmanned assets are real threats. The DND is funding cyber defenses, but the race requires constant vigilance and updates. Without proper sustainment, advanced gear can become idle stock, a hollow capability. Success depends equally on people, funding and secure systems. The next two to three years are critical, testing, early deployments, and joint exercises. Aguila, Castor, Buhawi, and the Naval Drone Program are building blocks of an integrated defense. From field trials to joint operations, the real test is operational integration across the AFP. If persistent ISR and ground sentinels deter aggression and save lives, the strategy will have proven itself. This pivot could reshape Southeast Asia's tech landscape. Partners and rivals will respond. Momentum must continue, innovate, adapt, and field systems faster than adversaries can counter them. Ambitious, risky, necessary, this transformation is already underway and will shape security for decades. 
If you found this deep dive valuable, smash that like button, subscribe for weekly defense tech breakdowns and drop your smartest prediction below. Thanks for watching. Stay informed, stay engaged.